At the time of the First World War, more than 7,000 people were employed by Vickers Engineering on Tyneside. Now the figure's down to a few hundred, and the ones who were made redundant when closure was announced here at the Scotswood Works four months ago have now left. Last night there were only seven men on the night shift. The last 150 who were paid off this morning met in their favourite pub just across the road from the works. All the lads are getting together, they have this farewell drink with each other because of, uh, they might not see each other again in, in some cases. One or two will be kept in touch with each other and they'll probably bump into each other now and then, but the majority will not see each other again probably. It really is. So you, you, you've got the, the duality there. But I would say personally most of the lads, you know, they are very bitter and they regret the fact that this day has come and the Scotland works is closed. But it is as far as we are concerned a part of history and that works close to the It's the saddest moment in my life. Saddest moment in my life. It's a disaster to the world. For sure, much, much brainy men and workmanship. It's second and honour. It's, it's a sad thing, but to see craftsmen being thrown on this rapid. Listen, it's annoying to think that Vickers House has done something here today at Scotswood. What the judges tried to do in two world wars, we've got nothing now. We're out on the street, Norman and I. I was brought up in a hard days on Scotland Road. Yeah. I lived on Scotland Road. Norman, old pal of mine, not as old as mine, you know. Yeah. But uh, for years and years, we've been brought up down here. And the thing, we're kicked out on the street. I will never get a job again, turn 60. Neither will Norman. It is a week. It is a week. It is a very uh, sad occasion when we're breaking up this year. With much of heavy engineering and shipbuilding seemingly in terminal decline on Tyneside during the 1980s, many new initiatives and schemes were introduced to try and alleviate the consequent social distress. Investment was sought from abroad and many companies either found investment partners or went under in the harsh economic climate of the times. National Enterprise Board. Mm. There was real situations to deal with mm. and the possible benefits mm. arising from you know getting an industrial policy uh, accepted by government mm. you know they weren't the reality the reality the situation was that there was rationalization starting to take place and closures and redundancies yes and that was the reality of the situation I had to deal with like yeah. rather than the possibilities of getting control and stopping closures through having a, a better policy. Uh, effective industrial policy. Yeah. Yes. But of course really the uh, I suppose the the disillusion was uh, when the closed Scotswood 1979 you know the campaign to stop the closure which was unsuccessful mm. and uh, you know the actual reality of meeting ministers you know Les Hookfield then was in the Department of Industry and finding out that uh, all these possibilities of the Labour government, you know, solving your problems for you in the shop floor, mm. uh, proved to be, uh, you know, not possible.
uh, you know, he, you were meeting officials from the Department of Industry uh, who were in fact saying the same things as Romans were saying yes. inside Vickers. Yes. Well, th th this was for the good of the country, like. It's good for the country that you're going to lose your job. That's any comfort to you, like. Do you think the country... We weren't saying it as directly as that, no. like, but that was a message that was coming across. Yes, yes. Of course, the, you know, you also found out it was fairly close liaison between permanent officials of the Department of Industry and, and Vickers management. Mm, mm. It wasn't, after all, your government. Yeah. You know, Armstrong's, as an arms manufacturer, did at one time rival Krupp's in Germany. Uh, as being the biggest supplier of arms to the various nations around the world. And on this site here, which has just been demolished the administration block, the centre, you know, of all that activity, uh, of all that international activity going on around the world, it all was taking place here, the kind of centre of the spider's web, with Armstrong sitting in the middle of it. Uh, this here is one of the old big machine shops, number 11 shop that had very massive machines in here, planer millers, borers on which the big holes of the tanks were done, uh, massive things, massive machines, uh, doing the machining after the tanks had been uh, fabricated, the holes of the tank. It's uh, odd too that uh, lots of parts of the tanks are called after ships. The hull, the main part of a tank is called the hull, the same as the ship was about 140 years of history is ending with the demolition contractors moving in and knocking it all down and of course in the uh, in the process destroying the whole uh, kind of fabric of the West End destroying the economy of the West End because all the families uh, on Scotswood Road there uh, that they, they depended upon the the main breadwinner was working uh, here in the Elsip Works and keeping the whole of the economy of the West End going. We're here coming up to the VSG, that shop there was where the VSG was built. In the VSG, the end of 1959 was the first big activity to close down in Elsip. This is the uh, car body dye shop, the kind of centre of the trade union activity, the leading shop for wages and conditions. Uh, in the uh, in Vickers Armstrong's Elzig Works, uh, and the whole of the uh, history of the works uh, is linked with the history of Newcastle and the growth, you know, from the Industrial Revolution of the engineering plants, the shipyards, uh, and the decline uh, of Vickers Armstrong's works. Of course, is linked with the decline of. Uh, the shipbuilding and engineering manufacturing bases of uh, British industry.